This series is brought to you by you. Thank you so much for all of my Patreons and the people who have used the Jackson's affiliate links. It is thanks to you guys that this series have been made possible. Thank you so much. Welcome back to the Colossal Colour Showdown. In this episode, we are going to be taking a look at the Indanthron Blue. Indanthron Blue is going to be an episode where I have to go slightly stray off the design of this series, which is to compare colours that have the same name, only because Indanthron Blue is one of those colours that different brands have different names for. And if I just went with Indanthra and we would only have a few colours, so I thought it's better to just stick with PB60, which is what we all think of Indanthra Blue, and collect colours that have PB60 and not stick to the name so much. So we have a wide variety of names here. From Daniel Smith, we have Indanthra Blue, then Royal Blue by Holbein, Dark Blue by Schminke, Blue Indanthrine by Sennelier, Indanthrine Blue by Windsor Newton, Indanthrone Blue by Core, Anthroquinone Blue by M. Graham, Indanthrone Blue by Roma Small, Indanthrone Blue by Mission Gold, Indanthrine Blue by Da Vinci, Old Delft Blue by Old Holland, and then the Fans Blue by My Mary Blue. One thing I want to know f before I get started is the Schminke's name. On their catalogue it says dark blue and indigo is also listed separately. Now my tube has dark blue indigo on it so I'm not quite sure which one this is. It is definitely PB60 though so we know at least that. If you do have a tube of either dark blue or indigo or dark blue indigo please let me know what your tube says the colour name is. First up is the hues and it Industrial Blue should always be this smooth, high intensity, high tinting strength blue that is more of a reddish blue rather than a greenish blue. And if that confuses you, I do have a video explaining the warms and cools of blue and how it's different from what we instinctively think of. And I will put a link up here for the vi that video so you can get comfortable when I say warm, when you think, well, no, that, what blue looks cool. I can see that some colours are a little bit more green blue rather than red blue, such as the Schminke one and the Da Vinci one. These are definitely more on a green side, whereas things like the Anthroquinone blue is very blue that's on a redder side. Interestingly, I'm definitely noticing some granulation happening here and I don't know if it's supposed to do that or if it's my weird dark blue indigo tube, but it's the only one that have really granulated on this paper. This paper is the Fabian Academia and if you think why am I using such a cheap paper, it's because if I use the cheapest paper to put watercolour down in and the paint still behaves, then hopefully when it comes to you using the same colour on your nice watercolour paper, you'll be guaranteed that it will behave very well on that paper. In terms of streakiness of painting a swatch, I would say that the bottom row is done pretty badly. The Mission Gold one is terrible. It It's shiny as well as really streaky. And in terms of shininess, the old Delft Blue from Old Holland also suffers from that shininess quite a lot. Roma Schmaltz one and Mary Mary Blue one does suffer from a tiny bit of shininess when you use it really, really concentrated. So I don't know if the camera can catch this. I will I will wave the paper around in the hope that it will catch. But you have a little bit here and a little bit there, whereas the Mission Gold one and the Old Holland one, it's all over the swatch, which is not ideal. Another one that's quite streaky is the M. Graham one, but you might just fall in love with this colour, which I will totally understand. And at least this one doesn't suffer from shininess. 
The top row is a little bit better. I, I would say that the smoothest is between the Indanthrum Blue and the Royal Blue, the Daniel Smith one and the Holbein one. Compared to colors like these, these go down much smoother. Schmincke one goes beautifully smooth as well. However, it's got that granulation which I was not expecting in a PV60. Sennelier went down pretty well. There's a little bit of patchiness, but these three are the best in terms of going down smoothly. In terms of rewet, Holbein was very easy to rewet. Windsor Newton was harder to rewet. PB60 is always going to be pretty easy to rewet. So you're not going to have huge problems like you do with other pigments. However, if I were to compare Winsor Newton to other colors, I definitely noticed that it was a little bit harder to rewet. Mission Gold was easy to rewet, but again, I probably wouldn't couldn't recommend you this based on how streaky and shiny it is. I also commented on the texture of how the paint felt putting down, and Daniel Smith felt a little bit thick, not quite gummy, but it definitely felt thicker than the other colors. Roman Small, Da Vinci and My Merry Blue suffer from feeling a little bit dry. It feels like when you're painting on Mastone that you need to water it down a little bit, which might not be ideal for you. There were quite a lot of bubbling happening with this colour. Core suffered from some bubbles, but as you can see, you can't see the bubble once it dries, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Old Holland one produced bubbles, but as I painted the swatch, it, the bubbles popped, and you can kind of see that here, 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 it created some unevenness, which you do not want in a watercolour. My Mary Blue also suffered from the same things. Here and here, you can kind of see, although it's not as bad as the other colors from my Mary Blue that we have looked at in this series so far, where it bubbled and it stayed and you could exa see exactly where the bubbling happened. However, I'm still not impressed with these two brands. These are the new brands that I did for this season due to requests, but so far they have a lot of bubbling issues that are not great. Let's look at the prices and these prices are all UK prices that I've taken from Jackson's wherever I can. So the prices will be different if you live in another country. And for us, Core is still the most expensive one. And with the bubbling, I probably wouldn't say that it's worth paying the extra if it's got some problems with its performance. The cheapest one is Sennelier with it being 56 pence per milliliter. However, that is for the 21 millimeter tube price. If you go for the smaller tube, then it's going to work out a little bit more expensive. But if you really like this color, you could go for the 21 milliliter tube. In terms of other colors, we only have the Delft Blue, which is again PB60 that Schmincke has, as well as the Dark Blue or the Indigo or the Dark Blue <laughs> Indigo. If you know any more than me on this one, then please do let me know in the comments down below what is happening with those naming. But yeah, they do have a Delft Blue. Let's have a look at the opacity. And Indanthrum Blue should be pretty transparent. And most of these are. However, I do notice that there are some deposits showing quite opaquely on the Roma Small and then a little bit on the Windsor Newton, but only a very, very tiny bit. In terms of opacity, it's as expected, except for Roman Small, I think, is probably a little bit more on the opaque side. It's still going to be pretty transparent, though. It's not going to be like a really opaque paint. And then we have the Lift and Glazes. Indentra Blue is going to be a staining colour. In general, and I say in general because for some reason, Old Holland one isn't staining. I don't know what happened here. All the other colours, as you can see, are pretty staining. I would say that the most staining one is the Antoquinone Blue by M. Graham, followed by Da Vinci, and then followed by Daniel Smith. You can see that these really struggle for the paint to come up. But then Old Holland just came up uh, pretty much all the way up, which I was not expecting. I don't know what makes it so 
easy to lift but if you do want in dancer and blue but you want the ability to lift the paint totally off your paper afterwards which you don't get in most in dancer and blues and you can handle it bubbling and popping all over the place on you then i would kind of suggest this i still wouldn't recommend this for you because of the whole bubble popping and raining your washes thing however if you are in that niche need then yeah try the old holland you can see the bubble popping again here and also i would say that on this sample you can see the bubble popping more on the core so for the price you have to pay for this color for core i wouldn't recommend the core i'm sorry about this this was just i, I dropped a drop of water and i had to wipe it up so that's why it's there it's not for any other reason in terms of glazing you should be able to have an easier time glazing if you use a staining and transparent color which in danthro blue is however i am quite disappointed by some of these some are pretty good at glazing such as the m graham one i think did a great job because you can see this bottom layer very clearly here and it's a pretty even square whereas say like schminke you get a lot of lifting coming up you also get the same with Winsor newton where you can see the outline and then when i came to fill the square that paint had already lifted that is not ideal so if you are going to use indanthrum blue as a glazer you're going to have to pick your brands very carefully i would recommend m graham rumor small is pretty good it's very even at least, which, you know, apparently that's a hard thing to get in in down from blue. I would say Danny Smith is pretty decent. You don't, uh, you at least don't get this very weird square outline. So maybe M. Graham, Danny Smith and Roman Schmore if you do do a lot of glazing with. My Mary Blue is a good glazer. You get a nice even square on the second layer and you get nice clear line however because of that bubbling issue i still would not recommend it da vinci's one is also a pretty good glazer because it is the most staining one. you get a very clear lines so m graham roman small da vinci and daniel smith recommended for doing lots of glazing with mary mary blue also works fine apart from the bubbling issue so if you have my mary blue in downtown that doesn't bubble great but uh, mine is from a half pan that is pre-made by my Mary Blue and I just keep having this bubbling issue that I don't know why. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have my Mary Blue fans blue either in the pan or the tube and whether you suffer from that bubbling issue as well as the old holland and the core one do let me know if you suffer from bubbling issues with your paints so that is it for this video in the next video we are going to take a look at gradation reaction to salt and the color mixes so do check that out next week on this channel if you are interested in trying in dandron blue i do have a dot card that has eight of these colors that you can sign up to receive over on my Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash autocarno. It has the Danish Mess, the Holbein, the Sennelier, the Schminke, the Windsor, Newton, Core, Mission Gold, and Da Vinci. So if you do fancy trying these colors out for yourself at home and you want to do these tests, then sign up for $17 tier or more, and then you get the dot card as well as a whole host of other rewards that are totally awesome. And come and join our community. That's patreon.com forward slash autocarno. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next next video. Bye!